So guys, it's been a little bit of a hiatus since I've been on the camera and Ibra and Dimitri, they were actually bugging me to get on camera for this one because this one actually hits a little bit close to my heart and I need to explain a little bit about that before we sort of go on with this review. So Noctua, like 15 years ago, was actually one of the first companies that sampled hardware Canucks. I think the first one was, was Thermalright from back in the day and then there was Arctic Cooling and then there was Noctua. And since then, th that was actually before they launched the U12S. But when they launched that U12S, boy, oh boy, did that come out to the scene like a bat out of hell. So since then, this has been actually one of the best coolers for the money you could possibly buy. Great engineering, great everything else. It does cost $70 US though, if you can actually find it for that price. But Noctua, they went back to the drawing board and they said, look, in this environment, how can we address some of the shortcomings that are currently in the market? And they came out with this. This is the U12S Redux. It keeps all of the great qualities of the original U12S, cuts out a few of the frills. It comes in at just 50 bucks. Now I wanna talk about this couple of other things right after a message from our sponsor but I also wanted to very quickly talk about this we've soft launched a little bit of merch there's a couple of t-shirts down there a couple of other things I want you to go check those out in the description below that's a pretty cool shirt thanks nose you know, not too cool <laughs> pretty cool pretty cool anyways go check it out guys right after a message from our sponsor power your system with incredible power the dark power 12 from be quiet with the highest efficiency rating possible 80 plus titanium certification impressive silent wings frameless fan cooling an overclocking key to switch between single and multi-rail operation and fully modular cables check it out below well with that out of the way i am sure you guys are wondering what are the actual differences between these coolers. But before I get to that, I want to get to the similarities. And the first similarity is actually the size. They're both still extremely, extremely slim and the compatibility is absolutely perfect. I'm going to get to the installation process in a bit. And if you want a little bit more detail, the actual dimension of the U12S and the U12S Redux are 158 millimeters high, 125 millimeters wide, and just 45 millimeters deep. But if you look at them next to one another, they legitimately look the same unless you go into the minute details. So first of all, the U12S Redux has four heat pipes instead of the five on the U12S. In addition to that, those heat pipes are not soldered to the fin array. And that might not sound like a lot, but that direct contact with the fin array allows them to take the heat from the core up through the heat pipes and more quickly transfer it to the heatsink. One other thing is that the U12S Redux doesn't actually come with a tube of thermal compound. Instead, Noctua pre-applied a hexagonal pattern on the base. And now another thing that's probably pretty obvious to you is that they both come with a single fan, but the fan that they come with is completely different. The specs of the fans are what really sets one apart from another. The single fan on the Redux is actually the P12 Redux that's rated at 1700 RPMs, whereas the F12 on the original U12S is only rated at 1500. And even though they have really similar specs across their operating range, the F12 can actually deliver a lot better airflow and static pressure at a lower RPM. So that means that basically you're gonna be getting about the same temperatures, but the U12S is gonna be operating at a little bit lower decibel levels. So I guess what I also wanted to talk about are the areas that Noctua did cut back a little bit other than in the design, and that's in the accessories. So first of all, you don't get a full tube of thermal compound like you would with the U12S. That's where the pre-applied thermal compound comes in. You also don't get any clips for a second fan and you don't get any of the low noise or ultra low noise adapters or even the Y splitter that come with the U12S. Instead, all of those items are actually included in a separate accessory pack. Think about this like knock to a DLC. So let's go through what you get in this. So first of all, you get a second 120 millimeter fan. Now, is that really necessary? Well, you're gonna see from our performance results later that this cooler already performs really, really well on 99.9% .9 of the systems that are out there. But other than that, you also get a low noise adapter. You get the fan Y splitter, a ultra low noise adapter, fan clips, and vibration mounts. And that's pretty much it. But I also wanted to talk a little bit about the installation hardware because it's the one thing that I wish Noctua would have really added to the Redux. And that is this little guy that we got with the, almost actually on every single Noctua cooler. It's a really, really handy screwdriver. So about that installation hardware. Well, 
Noctua includes your standard AM4 mounts, but they don't actually have AM3 compatibility. Those AM4 mounts, you're gonna have to reuse the backplate that comes with the motherboard. I'm gonna get into the full installation in a little bit for this because it's super, super simple. Now on the Intel side, you get your standard LGA 1200 and LGA 1150 hardware along with 2066 studs. But I really have to give it to Noctua because they're actually using a full metal backplate for the installation of those Intel systems. A lot of other manufacturers have actually moved to plastic and that is such a pain in the Breach. There, You see, Snow's nose, because he actually did the, the Cooler Master installation, right? The, the M410 something. Oh my God. It was absolutely horrible. <laughs> Go check out the video, it's gonna be- Right up here, right up here. Anyways, here he's, you don't know this yet, but uh, Boot Sequence and us were actually uh, sort of, housed together in the same office right now. So what ended up happening, I watched this poor guy try and install this piece of crap plastic onto the back of a motherboard. And I think it took him like forever. Anyways, you're gonna be as frustrated as he was. So good on Noctua for that one. But in order to show you guys how easy that installation process is, I wanted to bring over an AM4 system and go from start to finish for the installation process of the U12S Redux. All right, so installation onto an AM4 system is unique, but it follows the same path as the Intel one. The only difference, like I said before, is the Intel one has a Noctua provided backplate. So here, all you would need to do is install little spacers, and then there's going to be a crossbar that's gonna be installed on both sides with separate screws. Those ones, you just pop in there, and because the AMD backplate is already in place, it should just slot in. So we're gonna speed this up just a little bit to save some time, and I'll get back to you on the other side. All right, with that out of the way, I wanted to talk about this crossbar that Noctua has installed because it really sets them apart from a lot of other manufacturers of heat sinks. So because this is installed, you don't have to fiddle with a whole kit of parts. And not only that is Noctua pre-installs their screws with little detents on the bottom. And those detents allow this screw to be guided into this stud without too much of a problem. So I'm gonna get that out of the way and you'll see how easy it is, even though we're gonna speed up this footage a bit. Well, the cooler is pretty much installed, except I wanted to talk a little bit more about memory clearance. And that's one of the U12S and the U12S's highlights, is that because the cooler is so slim, basically any high memory module will fit in front of it, even on the slot the closest to the CPU socket. And yes, sure, there are thicker memory modules out there. And if that's the case, all you really have to do is move it up a little bit and clear that memory module. But other than that, installation is done 110%. You cannot get easier than that. So with that all out of the way, I really wanted to cut to the performance because we have to remember that the DNA of this cooler is actually taken from one of the most legendary coolers on the market right now. So on to performance testing, starting at 120 watts. At a lower heat load that covers most modern CPUs out there right now, well, the U12S Redux is super competitive with the original U12, and that's probably because the heat loads remain so low. And we've already seen this before because those low heat loads do not stress most modern CPU coolers. It's only a couple degrees behind or tied with the U12S, but you can see from the graph, it does get just that little bit louder like I talked about before. And then when normalized to 38 decibels right across the board, this thing is right in line with pretty much every other cooler that we've tested. Well, at 165 watts, which is actually below the PL2 levels of most higher end Rocket Lake chips, the U12S Redux and the U12S still run neck and neck right up until the slightly higher fan speeds where the Redux does start falling behind by a couple degrees, but don't forget, it does get louder as well. And this chart that we're looking at right now really puts things into perspective when you remember that there are actually some competitors here that cost twice as much or even more, but offer similar or even worse cooling performance at 165 watt TDP. Now moving to 260 watts, and remember, this cooler costs 50 bucks. At a full 260 watts, the U12S did fail at lower fan speeds, but once you get into higher RPMs, it actually does deliver proper cooling, but what it doesn't do is offer cooling 
that's good enough for these super, super high-end chips. But really, that was totally to be expected. You have to be running this thing at 100% fan speed for it to get sort of reasonable temperatures and not close to throttling temperature for a lot of modern processors. Now, moving to that 38 decibel normalized, I mean, what did you expect, guys? This is a $50 cooler. But at the same time, I also wanted to talk about those dual fan results because slapping more fans onto there does increase performance. But by how much? Well, at 120 watts, really not that much because you didn't need that additional cooling capacity. Moving to 165 watts, you can see it start to make a little bit of a difference as we go higher and higher in the RPM range. But at that 260 watt level, well, that's where really it can put the pedal to the metal. And if you have any intent in overclocking your processor, or if you upgrade your processor to a higher end one in the future, this is really where you want to be with that dual fans. And that's the option that Noctua gives you to spend a little bit more money, maybe a little bit further in the future, and get that much better performance without having to switch coolers. So I guess that really brings me to the conclusion. I want to cut this short. Is the Noctua U12S Redux worth it? The answer to that is absolutely. Look, it's not a cheap, cheap cooler, but it gets the job done for pretty much anyone and anybody else that needs to go a little bit higher in the TDP level, well, you slap on that other fan. And yes, that other fan does bring it very, very close to the U12S, but it actually does get you a little bit better performance. Now, on the other hand, there are a couple of coolers out there that are also extremely good values. The Scythe Fuma 2, Absolutely, that is a perfect competitor to this. But the problem with the Scythe is that it isn't as widely available as the U12S Redux is right now. So I guess that really wraps things up. Maybe I'm gonna be bringing myself on camera a couple more times over the next little while. But if you like this type of content, please by all means subscribe. Let me know if there's anything you would like us to review or at least in like a cheap and cheerful sort of manner if there's something that you know is an awesome value that you want me to cover because I'd love to see those things too. So anyways, I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good day guys.